Hey leaders, welcome to another episode of the Leading Collaborative Response Podcast. In episode 34, Lorna and I sit down for a conversation, exploring how color coding data can be used to support discussions about students. We also share how the same data can be reorganized to be used for different purposes to support your various team endeavors. In addition to sharing some key insights why color coding data is integral for effective analysis, we also share a number of additional resources to support you and your teams. So let's get started. Leading organizations with intentionality and purpose is complex work. And dedicated leaders work tirelessly each and every day to build impactful cultures of collaboration. But effective collaboration is difficult and messy. The good news is you don't have to do it alone. Join the Jigsaw Learning Team for Leading Collaborative Response, sharing insights for leaders committed to establishing, refining, and deepening collaborative response in their organization. It'll come as no surprise when we talk about the importance of color coding data. Oh yeah, for sure. When we talk about the data and evidence, that's where we often go is color code your data. That is an absolute necessity as we've seen several times when staff will come into examining data, it's not color coded. And almost immediately, the first thing that we see happen is highlighters come out and people start highlighting and noting different things to be able to really visualize the data. And we can save that step as leaders if we've got that data color coded. Now, the, the question that always surfaces when we talk about this with leaders is who does this? Mm -hmm. And so uh, knowing that uh, first of all, you know, leaders, it gives you an opportunity to be able to look at the data yourself if you're the one that is going through that process of right. organizing. But that doesn't mean to say that you always will be the one who yeah. does that task because we we often find as we come into schools that there are people who are so incredibly skilled at uh, sheets and excel and that being able to access their skill is mm -hmm. uh, a wonderful thing and they contribute to the uh, leadership of the work that's going on. So I really think it depends on the context of your school because we've For seen sure. everything. We've seen leaders that um, like to Just do it, it myself yeah. as a leader. I like doing that because I could then see the data um, first off to kind of prep myself for conversations mm -hmm. and Really, all it took was a very quick crash course in either <laughs> Google or YouTube and looking for how to sort data in, in typically it's in Sheets or Excel documents. Yeah. And if your data is not coming in that way, oftentimes you can export it from systems into what's called a CSV that then becomes accessible through Google Sheets or Microsoft Excel. Then the other one to crash course in is conditional formatting. Mm -hmm. If you learn those two things, the um the actual programs can do the work for you so yeah that's one we've seen other schools where there's like you said somebody very skilled that can do that mm -hmm. or an executive yeah. assistant uh, could do that or even as a school we set the criteria for the color coding and then ask teachers when they are sure. reviewing their data or entering data whatever that looks like to be able to use that criteria to to color code yeah, and you had mentioned highlighters before. That's not always a bad thing yeah. either because it allows us to really look at, you know, look at that data. But data is much more manageable for teams when it is organized in a way that is purposeful for your end, end intention. And when mm -hmm. we think about our layers of teams, there's different ways that we organize data for each of those teams right. because they have different purposes. We'll be right back to continue this episode. As school leaders, we have mounting pressures to ensure that data is not only being used to inform our responses, but can be leveraged to evidence if what we're doing is leading to better outcomes for students. Planning for the effective use of data with our teachers is hard, but it doesn't have to be. When schools have a targeted plan for the collection and utilization of data and evidence related to student success, conversations become more focused and staff can see the impact their collective practices are having for students. 
Join me for the online on-demand workshop, Establishing a School-Wide Data and Evidence Plan. 10 Considerations to Maximize the Use of Data in Your School. Part of our Supporting Collaborative Response Series. In this workshop, I share 10 considerations for school leaders when establishing a school-wide data and evidence plan focused on the key measures being used to inform priority areas. I also share numerous resources, templates, and samples to help support the effective determination, scheduling, collection, organization, analysis, and sharing of that data. Purchase the workshop and you'll also have the ability to replay all or any portion of the workshop as you wish. Access this on-demand workshop today to learn more about how to effectively align your school's data and evidence as a foundational component of a school's collaborative response. And now back to our conversation. So really, the the then end goal of color coding that data is it allows us to shift and really hone in on our conversations. Yeah. And by sure. shift, I mean, in a collaborative team meeting, being able to say, who should we talk about becomes way more directed when we can say, let's bring up a student who the data says is yellow. If yeah. we've used that simple red, yellow, green to indicate students who are not yet meeting expectations, approaching expectations or meeting or exceeding expectations. In the collaborative team meeting, we wanna shift to those students who are close that we could see benefit happening with just some shifts in classroom practice or introducing some additional strategies that can be at that classroom level and then being able to recognize it's our school support team and case consults mm -hmm. that are primarily focusing on our students who the data say are needing more intensive or additional supports in place. That becomes really, really clear when we have that criteria to color code that data. Yeah, for sure. And and even beyond that is uh, what we do in collaborative planning mm -hmm. and taking data, looking at what are what are the the strategies or what are the the skills that students are demonstrating through that the assessments that right. we could be focusing on because we see that multiple students are also are experiencing that well, issue and that becomes a way that we design our goals for our collaborative planning and when you've color coded that it like you say you can see you actually physically yeah. can visually ascertain which of these um focus areas should we be directing attention to because we see more red happening in this column than yeah. in this column, for instance? In our um, overview sessions, we often lead an activity of looking at uh, a sheet that is uh, not color coded and, and it's just the raw data and then what the same data looks like right. when it is color coded and we we can include that in the notes today just for you yeah. to be able to look at it there's a very stark difference and uh probably the most important part is accessibility yeah and i often follow with the question to say if i was to ask you which student should we celebrate on the color coded page it's very easy find it quickly, to find quick. it quickly on the on the one that's not color coded i have to dig i have to really look and try and ascertain what's happening there and then even more importantly when we say who should we focus on again the color coding helps the other thing that the color coding does is it elicits ahas or questions even that may not have come without it i can remember within our own school when we color coded our data and looked at the red, yellow, green, and then we had a blue category for not yet meeting, approaching, meeting, or exceeding expectations. When we looked at data in collaborative planning teams, we found out that the group that was having the greatest impact that we were seeing the greatest growth for was actually our blues, which was fascinating <laughs> because we weren't necessarily spending Focusing a great deal on, of focus yeah. on those students needing enrichment, but it led to an aha that by putting all of these different supports and interventions that we were putting into the classroom really targeted at the yellow and red uh, students as based on the data. But blue we're seeing growth. We were well. seeing Green the growth and, and, and had the <laughs> huge understanding that 
what we're putting into place are universal supports that are impacting all and the students that were at that just a, close to um, being at a place of exceeding expectations made that additional leap just because of what was happening in the classroom. We would have never come to that aha without the color coding of that data. Yeah, for sure. It's such an important piece, um, but knowing that it does take that extra step in preparation for teachers to be able to look at that data. It also helped us tremendously where before we would be saying, you know, 70% of students are um, meeting our acceptable standard. And now next year it's 72 and you go, oh man, all that work. And we had 2% gains in acceptable. Mm -hmm. But when you broke it down by color, we could actually see, oh my goodness, look at the large amount of students that um, were red the previous year who now are no longer red. It doesn't mean they're yet meeting expectations, but the growth in the yellow has been significant. Mm -hmm. So even though the overall data is not there yet, we can see when we've broken it down that, oh my goodness, we are getting gains that we don't see when we are just focusing on a, a single number. And and that is really about being able to surface those celebrations that our data 100%. recognizes as well. And I think I think a, a couple of years ago, we had walked into a school where they had designed an intervention program and they were tracking the growth and progress of students on explicit skills. Right. And they had in the in the principal's office two sheets of data to be able to show, you know, what I remember happened this, in this was September. No, it was actually, was it? it was November and March. November and the, March. The two were held up against each other. And without looking at the skills, without looking at the names. They actually had taken the names off. Yeah. Remember? In the oh, office, that's they right cut too. the names yeah. right off of the data sheet. But you just stood back and looked at those two comparisons and you could see the growth. Yeah, like, just by the colors and super exciting for for school, the school to be able to show that in these skills, we are building uh, we are building the knowledge and understanding of our students on an ongoing basis. And it's represented just by those two comparisons. It was really exciting to see. I can also remember one um, end of year activity that we had done as a staff that had huge power. We'll be right back to continue this episode. I wish we had more data, said no teacher ever. Our contemporary schools have an abundance of data we can be accessing to inform decision making from the classroom level to the school level and beyond. Data as a focal point is no longer elusive. The challenge lies in structuring and presenting it in a way that facilitates easy interpretation and actionable insights. How we organize the data matters. My name is Curtis Hewson, lead learner and co-founder of Jigsaw Learning. In this free on-demand webinar, I'm going to be sharing with you five mistakes leaders make when organizing data for their teams. Access this webinar and in addition to how to address these five mistakes, numerous free resources will be shared with you that you can begin using immediately. I can't wait to have you join me to ensure you aren't committing one or several of these mistakes within your own organization. And now back to our conversation was being able to not only show the growth, but we put up the pictures of 12 students, I think it was, and 12, maybe 15. It wasn't a ton within the school, but students that had grown two color levels. So it either gone from coming into the year, not yet meeting, so red, and left green, or had been approaching yellow and left blue, those were massive celebrations for us to be able to see that, yeah, we're not only seeing overall growth, but here's 12 students that we saw significant growth. And when we could see those faces, people just lit up because yeah. they could they could see what it was that they had done that had led to that. And again, I don't think we could have been able to show that as effectively or efficiently if the data hadn't been color coded. Yeah. And we obviously we we use data and evidence to be able to inform who we need to talk about. So our focus is really on that uh, that growth and development that we need to mm -hmm. to work through with students. But 
the, the fact that we can use that same data to be able to celebrate what's happening for students and recognize for teacher teams and for staff in general, what is happening for students yeah. that we are seeing growth and and there's lots to celebrate. Absolutely. So we hope you've been able to take some things out of this. And as Lorna mentioned, we'll ensure in the description that we include a link to some of those data sheets. Please reach out if you have examples or further insights on how you've utilized color-coded data to um, really inform your conversations and the supports you're putting in place for students. So with that, we wish you all the best and look forward to connecting again soon. See you soon. For more on collaborative response, visit jigsawlearning.ca or join the JL Insider to receive access to newly added resources and content.